Have you ever wondered how a spacecraft travels through space? Once it leaves Earth, then what? Can you really zip and zoom through space like a fighter pilot? Can you really travel at the speed of light or even ludicrous speed? Hi, and welcome back to Ask an Engineer. I am Lindsay Newman, a fire protection engineering student here at the University of Maryland. In this episode, we'll talk with Dr. Jared Young about all things propulsion. Hi, my name is Jared Young, and I'm a lecturer with the Keystone program here at the University of Maryland. I teach space systems design, as well as space propulsion power. My grandfather worked at NASA Goddard, so I already had a love of space from that. I was about four or five years old, I really got into Star Trek. So when other people were saying, you know, I want to be a basketball player, I want to be a fighter pilot, I was like, I want to be a propulsion engineer. In terms of propulsion systems, you're limited based on what you can bring with you and be very efficient with how you're using it. So for most people, when they envision space travel, they envision big rockets, flames, and the space shuttle or the SLS just lifting up. Where I come in as a propulsion engineer, I'm like, hey, are there ways that we can make propulsion systems more efficient? One of these many answers is electropulsion. And so I work with what are known as electrostatic thrusters, which take an inert gas like argon or xenon, and we basically turn it into a plasma. We put it into an electromagnetic field, and we introduce high energy electrons into the gas and generate thrust with that. The advantage is, is that whereas chemical propulsion will only last for five or 10 minutes, electrical propulsion systems like that can last for years. This clip from Star Wars Squadrons, love that game, involves TIE fighters and TIE interceptors, but the TIE stands for twin ion engine. But with a real ion engine, you're not generating that much acceleration. So even just the act of making that turn you see at the beginning of the clip would be practically impossible for it without some type of supplement, like a chemical rocket or something like that, because you just can't go from one direction into another direction like that immediately in space. That comes from dogfights from World War II, Vietnam era. All these sci-fi shows from like 70s, 80s, 90s that use fighters and capital ships and whatnot is all from World War II naval doctrine. The Orville, which is a huge love letter to Star Trek, has a variation of what's known as the Alcubi Air Drive. The Alcubi Air Drive generates a bubble around the object in space. The advantage is that you can move great distances without breaking relativity. Is that as you're forming this bubble, space is moving around the bubble while you're standing still. In the show, it looks like you know, you're just stretching out into warp or whatnot. But in reality, it's basically moving you along space as if you were just a zipper. Science fiction as a whole really inspires engineers and says, hey, we saw this thing on TV, it's really cool. Maybe we can make it. Well, traveling at the speed of light seems like a stretch. It turns out that doing a trench run in space may be a little more difficult than previously thought. Still, the force is strong. Thanks for tuning in to Ask an Engineer. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you know when the next episode lands. If you have ideas for future episodes, leave them in the comments below. In the meantime, you can learn more about Maryland engineering at eng.umd.edu.